Man, it's hot here today. It's like 20 degrees outside, or as we call it in the UK, a heat wave. Or maybe all that heat is coming out of brand new Intel CPUs because they are getting very, very close to launch. That's right, Intel 15th gen aka Arrow Lake is almost upon us, with the first batch supposed to be launching in October 2024, alongside the brand new motherboards. But we should probably start with the fact that these aren't technically Intel 15th gen. As you may or may not know, some higher ups at Intel recently got very drunk and decided to rename their entire product stack, basically resetting the numbering. And now we have the new Intel Core and Intel Core Ultra 200 CPUs coming in hot later this year. Basically, this is how this product stack breaks down, with the Core Ultra 9 285K being the new flagship which will make all your PC friends jealous. So while it's not the most difficult thing in the world to get used to the brand new naming standard, but still, just why change it, Intel? You have the most iconic naming in the whole industry. Anyway, the naming scheme isn't the only thing that's new. The socket is changing as well as we're upgrading from LGA 1700 to LGA 1851 and you know what that means you have to pay extra for a brand new fancy ZA90 mover board and you're gonna have to pay a lot extra on top of that because these new mover boards aren't gonna support DDR4 unlike the last set from Intel which were in that transitionary period between DDR4 and DDR5 standards. Now mover board manufacturers are still being somewhat secretive when it comes to some specs of these mover boards like for example we don't know how many PCIe lanes there support. However, we have seen quite a few of them at Computex recently and the main theme when it comes to new advances in these mobile boards is mostly down to connectivity with things like Wi-Fi 7 everywhere, faster Ethernet and plenty more USB Type-C ports like for example in this prototype from ASRock where pretty much the entire back of the motherboard is just USB Type-C. Like would you buy a motherboard like that? Let me know down in the comments below. The other cool thing about this next generation is some of the new choices when it comes to memory. Sure, you can't really use DDR4 anymore, but there will be essentially three different flavors of DDR5 for you to use. The standard DIMMs we all know and love, CAM2, which we discussed on the channel before, and also some specialist mobiles like this one by Messiah will also use the special smaller DIMM standard for better overclocking performance. So those are just a couple of things to consider when going next gen Intel, though if you don't want to pay extra for a ZA90 mover board and I can't blame you, then you're gonna have to wait a bit longer for something a bit cheaper because lower end B and H chips and mover boards will most likely arrive at CES in January of next year. And now with all of that information, I wanna know what your, yes, your game plan is. Are you gonna be buying these Intel Arrow Lake CPUs or are you maybe getting the brand new Ryzen 9000 CPUs from AMD instead, seeing how they're launching in July? Or maybe this entire upcoming generation just bores you and you're happy with whatever you have right now or at least you tell yourself that you're happy with it so you don't get FOMO. Again, let me know all of that down in the comments below, and down there you're also going to find a Patreon, because even a single dollar a month truly goes a long way, plus huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Justin Rage, Ella Vroniak, Def Pender, Badish Voka, Patrick Harrison, not soon in Meg Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Lensby, Level Up, and Robert Sanders. And seeing how I feel like I'm about to melt in this weather, that's about it, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.